but the the thing with Flus is he's he's a really good tactician and motivator. Um, you know the the way that he had play he plays defense. The the Colts don't blitz a whole lot. They want to hit home with four, and they want to keep everything in front of them. And you know sometimes that frustrates fans who want to see you know ah, let's go with a cover zero blitz in this situation. But like the process works. The Colts. We're second in the NFL in turnovers this year, and they have been consistently in the top 10 in the NFL in takeaways every single season that Flus has been there. Um, you know, and from a leadership standpoint, like Flus commands his staff really well. Like you said, Alex, it, you know, it, it's kind of the defense is sort of his thing. Um, and he's done a tremendous job with it here in Indianapolis. The Maybe the biggest indication of that, you know, Flus was hired before Frank Reich. Flus came in, when it looked like Josh McDaniel was going, was going to be the Colts head coach, that things happened and that fell through. And Frank Reich, you know, he kept Flus on in 2018 and then kept him on for three more years. And we'll keep him on, you know, as long as Flus is going to be there and, you know, until he maybe gets a head coaching opportunity. Like it's it, the, the work that he has done on that side of the ball. Everything is very detailed. It's the, there aren't many leaks in it. Um, you know, we can get into kind of the, the, you know, the actual scheme of it, but just from a a 35,000 foot standpoint, like the way Flus leads that defense and coaches it and, you know, finds the right coaches to coach it is really impressive. And there are a lot of people around the league who view him as a future head coach. And you think about his, the, the influences for him. So Alex, I hear you're a Flus guy and you've been pushing him for a while. Well, like, I, I don't know that I'm a Flus guy. I just wanted to talk about him because right. he, you know, everybody yeah. in Chicago wants to talk Jim Harbaugh. Everyone wants to talk Brian Flores. You know, there's a lot of names we hear over and over. Ken, Ken, Ken and, and Strobes are saying you're a Flus guy. So I'm going to assign a Flus. you. Take your Flus, man. All right, I'm a Flus guy. All right, all right. I'm a Flus guy. So I've been I've been a Flus guy since 2007 because longtime Under Center listeners will remember the Chase Daniel era for me being a Mizzou grad and watching Chase Daniel in college at Mizzou. Well, Matt Eberflus was the Mizzou defensive coordinator my first two years when Chase was there. And I loved how those teams played defense. They were physical. They were fast. They were in the Big 12, so they gave up a lot of points. But Matt Eberflus started his career with Gary Pinkle, one of the, you know, again, I'm going to sound like a Homer Mizzou grad here, but one of the best uh, football coaches that I've ever been around just for what he did at a school that probably had no business winning as much as they did when he was there at Mizzou. Flus is also a Rod Marinelli guy. That's kind of his big defensive influence is Rod Marinelli. Um, and Flus does a lot of work with linebackers. Like he he is a line like he is a linebacker coach at his core. And that shows in the stuff that not only Darius Leonard has done this year, but Anthony Walker uh the last three years, and then Bobby O'Karake kind of stepping into a bigger role this year. The Colts have had some really good linebackers, and again, it's not just their they're incredible all pro and Darius Leonard. It's guys like Anthony Walker and Bobby Okereke who've played really well. And that that's kind of at the core of Matt Eberflus's coaching style is like, you got to have good linebackers. He always says that in, in his defense, which is a four, three, you need to have a really good nose or a three technique. You need to have a really good will linebacker, which is Darius Leonard. And you need to have a really good slot corner, which is Kenny Moore, the second. So, that's kind of how his philosophy sort of comes. But again, it it draws from Gary Pinkle. It draws from uh, Rod Marinelli. You know, the leadership now can draw from Frank Reich here in Indianapolis. So that, that stuff is all really important. And before we drill down into, I know you just brought up scheme, but before we kind of maybe drill down a little more into that, uh, first of all, shout out Gary Pinkle, former University of Toledo Rockets head coach yep. when I was there. So shout out UT. Um, I, I think... It's interesting, you know, now knowing that he's you you go so far back with him, not necessarily personally, but you have a lot of con- a long term connection with this guy. Right. Going back to your days at Mizzou this year must have been great for you because you get to talk to this guy every week. Right. About defense, about whatever, really, you know, you can get as long as you get your questions in over Zoom. Yeah. Was there any moment when you're talking with him, whether it was about a story or something just totally esoteric that you were kind of like, OK this guy's not going to be around here much longer because somebody's going to hire this guy once he gets in a room with them. Was there any moment that kind of, not that you didn't know already that he was ready, but that you were like, okay, somebody else, everyone else is going to see this very soon. 
I think the way that he, as a defensive coach, responds to adversity is is really important. Um, you know, the, the Colts started this season, we were 0-3, then 1-4. Um, there were some things going on on defense that were not up to the, the team's standard. And, you know, Flus always stuck to his process of it. And, you know, trusting the players and the process around him, even in the face of a, a pretty crummy start to the season. and you know, through the whole thing, by the way, like the Colts are still taking the ball away. So they, they had, they knew what they were doing. And I think, you know, not deviating from that process, not panicking and trying to do some different things um, with a defense that's very well established. You know, a lot of these guys have been here for three, four years. That was really impressive. Just how he went about that. The other thing with Flus, um, you know, I know sometimes these things can be a little bit hokey, but the Colts this year, they Flus found these, I mean, just the like the loudest shirts I've ever seen. And they had an eagle on them, and it was a or a hawk, and it was a ball hawk shirt. And they were like tie-dye. And they like if you got a pick, if you scored a touchdown on defense, you got a red one. If you got an interception, you got a blue one. If you got a forced fumble recovery, you got like a green one or something. I remember what the other one was. And like players in meetings, like they showed this a little bit on hard knocks, but like you know, Flus would like show him a shirt and players would just be like, caw, caw, caw. like it was, <laughs> it was hilarious. And like, it's just like those little, little motivational tactics sprinkled here and there, um, you know, that are authentic and players really can buy into, um, you know, he, he's pretty good at that. I, I, I really, you know, came away appreciating how he can do that with the team. In the, in the building, outside of the building, why do people think it'll be different for Matt Eberflus to be a CEO of a football team rather than just being a defensive coordinator? I think it's hiring the right people and trusting that you can hire the right people. Um, you know, you look at you look at that kind of archetype of a, a CEO and like it's obviously Bill Belichick. But beyond that, it's Mike Vrabel right now. I mean, the the stuff that the Titans went through, I saw it up close this year, like. That team has, they've got some kind of grit to be the AFC number one seed with all the crap they went through this year with injuries and Derrick Henry going out and all these other, like, and that's because Mike Vrabel is A, a really good coach and B, hired the right people in Tennessee to coach his team. That's that's where I think Matt Eberflus can draw from a lot of his, his background in learning how to hire the right people. And... You know, that that to me is something that I, I think, you know, you would trust him to have because Frank Reich, the, the thing about Frank is he is so detailed, like every person he brings in the building, it is it is incredibly thorough and incredibly detailed, like to the point where I know every coach probably is, but to the point where it's notable with Frank Reich. So I think, you know, learning how, you know, Frank goes about those interviews and you know, seeing that, I think helps Eberflus as a as a leader of a, an organization, a CEO of a team. You know, and his defense works. It's a good defense that I think the NFL, the the way things have gone lately with this transition to kind of keep everything in front of you from the, obviously the Vic Fangio tree. You know, Flus plays a four three, but like everyone's in nickel these days. The Colts Sam linebacker Zaire Franklin played eighteen percent of the snaps this year because you're just a nickel all the time. So whether you're three down or four down doesn't like really matter as much anymore. Um, but the strategy is the same, like keep everything in front of you, limit explosive plays and turn the ball over the Colts need, you know, the, the Colts admitted they needed to be better in terms of pass rush and get into the quarterback a little bit more. That's, you know, you know, Flus doesn't blitz a whole lot. You want to hit home with four. Um, but I, I think he showed a, a very strong, defensive coaching philosophy over the last couple of years and one that fits in today's modern NFL really well. 